Hello! Welcome to another video. I'm Sarah, also known as Ryman Ruin Arts, and today I'm bringing you an illustration based on the anime Princess Tutu. Princess Tutu is one of my favorite anime. I adore it, and it is so underrated. So I definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you're into fairy tales, ballet, Tchaikovsky, getting your heart torn out of your chest and trampled on, cute ducks, any or all of the above, definitely worth checking this anime out. If you like this piece and would like to own a print of it, please check out the link to my Patreon below, as this is this month's exclusive postcard print. I also have two stickers for this month that go along with this piece, as well as digital content and past blog posts. I also have some pretty interesting goals that I'm working towards with my little community over there, so if you're at all interested in checking that out, please click those links. I also have linked below my Instagram where I post several times a week with works in progress, behind the scenes, adorable pictures of my rats, and all that good stuff. So I'd love to have you on either of those communities if you'd be interested in checking those out. So I'll be the first to admit, I am not stretching myself too far outside of my comfort zone with the concept of this piece. Anime is kind of what got me into drawing in the first place, especially shoujo anime like Cardcaptor Sakura and Sailor Moon and all that stuff, so drawing pretty anime girls is kind of my comfort zone. Um, and even Alphonse Mucha is kind of my comfort zone. Again, one of those things that I've loved since I was a kid and is one of the reasons that I wanted to draw. So that's kind of why I went in this direction. And honestly, it's totally fine. In my opinion, you don't always have to be stretching yourself outside of your comfort zone. You don't always have to be trying to do something that you've never done before or anybody else has ever done before. Sometimes you have to just take a step back and draw something because it's fun and it's easy and you know you'll get a pretty all right result with it. So that's what this was. I was being self-indulgent and I think that's fine. That being said, the area that I did want to push myself with this piece was my mediums of choice. I'm using Holbein Acrylic Gouache for the main body of this piece, but I also pull in some of my Fine Tech iridescent watercolors as well as black ink and a white gel pen later on. With the acrylic gouache, I use it fairly frequently in my mixed media pieces to add highlights, add details, add interesting differences in texture, all that stuff, but I don't usually use it for the main bulk of the piece, especially not when I know I'm going to be adding a gradient background and rendering skin and all that stuff because it's difficult to do that well in acrylic. It dries so fast, it's hard to get a good blend. So that's why I picked this medium, just because I have to make things a little bit difficult for myself. And overall, I learned a lot. You can see me now painting the background, painting this gradient, and let me tell you, it looks like it's going fast, it looks like it's going easy, that's all movie magic. I was losing my mind painting this and trying to get a good gradient, and I swear, the background took the longest of anything in this piece. However, Aside from what felt like forever painting the background, in actuality this piece came together so quickly and I'm pretty sure it's mostly the acrylic gouache that is responsible for that. According to my camera footage, it was all told only about three or four hours, which compared to my usual eight to ten or so is definitely improvement. And I love that. I am very impatient and extremely ADHD. And if things take longer than I feel like they need to, I just lose interest. And uh, sometimes I think it shows. So having a piece come together really, really quickly is great. Instant satisfaction for the win. I had so much fun trying to come up with an interesting composition for this piece and an interesting way of portraying the relationship between these two characters. Without getting too spoilery, the relationship between them is just so complicated and so interesting to me. They both have alter egos, and one set of those alter egos are kind of friends, but also very much rivals, and the other set of alter egos one is the main hero of the story, and the other is a main antagonist of the story. So you have a really complicated relationship between all of them, and I love it. 
I also really enjoyed exploring the visual duality of these two characters. Again, to try to stay away from spoilers, the anime does take heavy influence from the ballet Swan Lake. Uh, it uses Tchaikovsky as the main uh, soundtrack for everything. Um, and some of the characters are either named after characters in Swan Lake or maybe possibly literally the characters from Swan Lake. Mm -hmm. Watch it and find out what I mean by that. Um, so there is that duality between the white swan princess tutu and the black swan raven in Krahi. So that was so much fun to paint. And instead of going pure black and pure white, I did decide to go of more like a dark, almost velvety purple for Krahi, and then a very icy blue for um, Princess Tutu, just for the sake of it being a little bit more interesting to paint. Um, and I really like the visual result overall. It still has that contrast, but not quite so cliche, I guess, as straight up black and white. about now you can see me finally indulging my little magpie brain that wants everything in the world to be shiny all the time forever and using my fine tech iridescent watercolors i love these paints if you get a chance to try them i definitely recommend it they are expensive but it's worth it not only because shiny but also because they just work really really well they lay down really really nicely and I think they're probably the best iridescent watercolors on the market, so definitely recommend them if you get a chance to try. And that brings us to my favorite part of completing just about any illustration I do, which is line art. I love bold black line art, and it's something I don't indulge in very often because lately my focus has been on painting and rendering forms so getting to lean into that alphonse mucha inspiration and add bold black line art around this piece was everything i needed it made all of the difficult and challenging parts worthwhile and then of course after that is adding white highlights and additional line art in the jelly roll pen to really up that contrast like i said it made everything so worth it and i am so satisfied with how this piece turned out in the end obviously there's things i'll be doing better next time but that's the point of art practice in my mind is to practice and uh, learn new things with each new piece but like i said i love it so that brings us to the end of this video thank you again for watching feel free to like comment subscribe all that good stuff and definitely do check out the links that I mentioned to my Instagram and my Patreon if you want to see more art from me or support my art in any way. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye!